What's up everybody? Welcome to the Fish Blue Water Channel. I got Chad here from Jig Pro. We are day one, ICAST, Orlando, Florida. And uh, so Chad, yes, sir. first time I've met you, yep. obviously, but uh, uh, George, who is the owner of the company, the founder, um, hooked up with us earlier uh, this season. Jig Pro is a new sponsor of our summer series. We have a slow pitch division okay, uh, awesome. uh, in, this, in this series for the first time ever. Uh, just this past tournament, had close to a 10 pound mutton snapper oh, weighed wow. uh, on a slow pitch jig. Tournament before, almost a 28 pound king. So, tournament teams is starting yeah, to get I their like attention. It, like it. Awesome. But I know you guys have a lot of new products released yep. and a lot of like smaller stuff, other target species. So, talk about what's what's new okay. and what you've got coming down the pipeline here at ICAST. Yeah, so kind of, you know, uh, Jig Pro is known for all the slow pitch jigs. You know, that's kind of what we're really known for. Um, George kind of branched out a little bit this year as long as the team and, and we're trying to move into some other type of markets and okay. that's where we've got crappie jigs and pompano jigs that have really uh, seem to be taking off for us. So okay. uh, we're going to show you guys these here. Yeah, so for this year we have some new crappie jigs. A lot of people have already been fishing them. Um, on the East Coast catching mackerel, blue runners, pompano, um, peacock bass, snakeheads, I mean you name it, pretty much everything eats a crappie jig. West Coast, you can use them for Spanish mackerel. Commercial guys can use them for commercial lady fishing. You so are like, it. you know, just picking this up, for uh -huh. example, I'm going to guess like this feels like maybe a quarter ounce to a half ounce okay. if I had to guess. Like average depth of water, typically like something like this would be fish for these target species well, you're I mean, talking you about? you can fish them just straight off the beach. Like for me personally, like where I grew up on the west coast of Florida, like the, the Bradenton area, I would use these in about 15 foot of water targeting the Spanish mackerel all the way down to less than a foot for the pompano. Okay. There's no real limit. I mean, you can fish it wherever you, where you possibly can, just depending on the current. If you have more current, you might need to step it up in size. Now, these are decidedly different, like, as far as the design and some of the traditional jigs is is it mimicking something specific in terms of its I mean, style and appearance I, I wouldn't say these are much different than a lot of the crappie jigs what really sets these apart is if you've ever used some of the cheap tr cheap crappie jigs in the past the hooks are very weak they rust out they bend they break right um, these have a much stronger hook that's what really sets this jig apart okay. compared to a lot of the other ones that are out there as well as some of the flash that's added on it a lot of them in the store they're just going to be a very basic crappie jig kind of built to fall apart. These are going to last you a lot longer. 10-4. So these guys have my attention, Chad. Mine like, too. Don't this worry. is, uh, <laughs> again, for a guy who's admittedly a novice in a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. I've never seen a jig with this kind of configuration. Okay. So what do we got here? What is this bad boy for? So you've never pumped enough fish before? I have not no? really. Okay, so this Despite is like the <laughs> fact that I live in Pompano Beach. <laughs> I have not pompano fished before. So for pompano fish in this shape, all the pompano guys will know what it is. Like okay. a kind of a, a spoon shape, and right? Does that affect how it falls yeah, in the water? Yeah, these fall very erratically. Okay. Uh, we've actually fished pompano on a very clear day, like a school of pompano, and use this jig on them, and you can watch them just swarm it, trying to grab it. Wow. So that's such an erratic action, though. It just kind of just flails all over the place. Um, you can bounce it through the sand, mimic a crab, uh, or a sand flea or something like that, pompano jump all over and these. And is most of that like casting from the beach yeah, as well? Yeah, a lot of shore casting. It goes kind of with the finesse line of rods that we have coming as well. It kind of goes hand in hand with these. What really sets this one apart differently, it kind of mimics our, our deep jig. It has uh, the, the deep shape on the back side of it. Um, this helps it fall a little bit longer. These are a little bit wider than a traditional pompano jig that's out there. Okay. As well as they come with its own little assist hook like that. Um, where a lot of them are kind of hooked directly to the jig. Uh, when we have the assist hook like this, kind of gives it a little bit more freedom to stay hooked. Not okay. so much have the jig work against it to pull ah, the hook out. I so, got you. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, awesome product. This is in the, um, hopefully in the best in show, it's in the best of show category. Yeah, so hopefully we can I, I win that. I saw that. that. We're, we're yeah, rooting so for you. I appreciate it. So we're going to take you to the back side of the counter here for a jig that I am familiar with okay. for my style of fishing, you know, saltwater, kind of refishing, et cetera. So check it out. Need us around back. All right, so here we are, as promised, bucktail jigs. So Chad, mm -hmm. uh, while again, a lot of my fishing over the years has been done with live bait, um, very frequently, like even in tournaments, mm -hmm. um, we would carry bucktail jigs, maybe add a second or third hook, um, drift it back. Sometimes we've caught way or kingfish in tournaments that were better than some of the fish we caught on live bait. Okay. Um, on you know 
uh, basically a bucktail jig presented with a sardine or a value or something like that. So uh, talk about the, uh, I guess, the new line and, and uh, how it fits in for you guys. Yeah, so realistically where this fits in is kind of like we have the small crappie jigs. Um, you can catch snook and tarpon on those. These are going to be much more geared towards that, much bigger hook, going to handle a lot more abuse. These also are kind of a weedless as well, where you have an angle that kind of shapes down to kind of prevent any type of fouling up on any seagrass or mm -hmm. even in fresh water kind of helps out. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's going to use these to target anything. Your snapper on the East Coast for your muttons. I mean, pretty much anything eats a okay. bucktail like anyone knows. All right, so this for me, for example, is, you know, what I'm accustomed to is like a traditional style uh, bucktail jig okay. head. This obviously is a longer head, like, what is the is the difference primarily in just how the action of the jig? Yeah, just the way it's going to fall water. is going to be a little bit different. The one with the longer head is going to fall a little bit sharper just because the added weight to it versus this one is. Okay. Nice. All right. So we got anything else new that we need to show these guys on video? We got one more thing we can show them for the Ikajime case. So let's see if they can follow along with that one. All right. Let's do it. Ikajime. Say that fast three times straight and let me know how it comes out. But this is what we've got, the Ikajime Pro. Yep. Uh, you are the pro, Chad, so yep. I'm gonna let you do all the talking. But what he shared with me in terms of basically how you care for your fish after the catch, uh, this is a super cool, yeah. basically, instrument that was originated. It originated in Japan, Japan. yeah. So it's um, essentially what this is, is you know, I'm a big believer on if we're going to kill something and we're going to take its life, we need to take the best care of it we possibly can. And that's kind of where these kits come in. Um, they also have a benefit for commercial fisheries where, you know, we don't see a lot of American fish on the Japanese market because the, our fish don't export that well versus we always see a lot of Japanese fish coming into the U.S. This type of product is a big reason why. Okay. Um, when we throw a fish in the box and it suffocates to death, there's a lot of chemicals being released in that fish that make the meat deteriorate. What we do with this is we actually have a brain spike. Once the fish is landed, the first step is we actually insert this into the brain of the fish to kill it instantly. That stops any, any adrenaline or anything being released to that fish that's really going to help deteriorate the fish, so we want to stop that immediately. Okay. After that, we're going to get a five-gallon bucket of water, add some ice, and we're going to bleed the fish out into that slurry. Um, after that, we actually cut into the tail to expose the vertebrae. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this wire down the down the nerve canal. This feels like almost like heavy, like number 18. Yeah, I mean you can like actually rigging wire. You can actually do it with monofilament also if you had a last resort. Okay. And, and um, what we do is we run this wire down the nerve canal of the fish though, and it severs all the nerves. So now there's no residual movement being sent to the sent to the muscle tissue. So it it helps prevent rigor, um, delays it a little bit longer. And this provides for a much higher quality fish that we've really um, taken care of that, that fish that we just killed. And it looks like this knife is serrated on one side. Yep, and it is. Edge. So where this, the serrated knife can come into hand is we can insert it in the gill and actually cut the gill itself. And the fish bleeds really well just by cutting the gill itself. Okay. So, and you were mentioning to me before, is there a website or a place where they can go if they wanted to like actually see some video and learn a little bit more about this process and the benefits? Yeah, I would go to Ikajime Federation. I want to say it's .org. If not, it's .com. It's a guy named Andrew Choi. He's uh, the guy spearheading this movement in the United States. Um, please check it out. Please learn about Ikajime. It's very beneficial not only to, to you, but also as the fishery as a whole, especially commercially. So please check it out. And... Um, and these are available on jigprofishing.com. I want to say they retail for $59.99. So. As I said, it's, it's hard enough to pronounce. I think we've got it on camera <laughs> here, but we'll make sure that we include the spelling so you can find it online in the description below. I will handle the spelling because my YouTube producer behind the camera is not known for his grammar and spelling, but I still love you, Jassiel. We love you guys. Thank you for tuning into the Fish Blue Water channel. Thank yeah. you to Jig Pro for being a great a partner. Thank you guys. We're still here for another day of iCast. We'll see you for the next Fish Blue Water video.